Welcome to Framerate, I'm Dalton Gentry, and I'm here for a quick review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Now you may notice my counterpart, counterpart, Adrian Fort is not here with me. That's because over on our sister channel, Strip Cover Lit, uh, we've been working on a series for about three years now called Adrian Reads Harry Potter, where we've been breaking down every single Harry Potter book chapter by chapter, analyzing the literature and getting into the good meat of the Harry Potter series. As we have not finished that, we don't want to spoil anything for young Adrian. Therefore, he has not seen the Fantastic Beast series, he has not seen the Crimes of Grindelwald, uh, and therefore you just get me talking about it. Because I did go see it, because I am a Harry Potter fan. And what's more exciting than another Harry Potter movie? Hmm. Let's get there. Anyway, film as an overall, I was a little apprehensive about. I was not a huge fan of the first Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them film. I uh, thought it was a little cheesy and just... I don't know, I, unnecessary. Uh, it just seems like uh, old J.K. Rowling was just uh, trying to get a little more money. A uh, very Mel Brooks approach to things, you know, Harry Potter and the quest for more money. Uh, but yeah, that's okay, I get it. Uh, the fans definitely wanted more, therefore we have to make another film. We have to keep the series alive. So let's go Fantastic Beast. Whatever. However, The Crimes of Grindelwald, not bad, man. Not bad at all. Uh, there were a lot of enjoyable things about this. I think it was very aesthetically pleasing, first and foremost. I think some of our portrayals in this were surprising to me, uh, if not very commendable. Uh, the only thing that's really uh, putting me off from saying it was a damn fine movie was that uh, big old gaping uh, plot hole right at the end. Wow. Uh, it's something I mentioned we do on our sister channel, Strip Cover Lit, uh, is we analyze literature. And we've been working through the Harry Potter books for years now. Uh, and that's something we pride ourselves. It's our passion. It's what we enjoy doing. Uh, and when you take such liberties as saying, oh, look, it's the mysterious Dumbledore relative that uh, no one knew about, and he just happened to never be mentioned in the canon of the series, no. You don't take those kind of liberties with a film. Uh, and it's, it's not for me. No, not going to work. Mm -mm -mm. But anyway. Let's get there. Uh, starting out, I'd like to talk about a little bit of the aesthetics of the film, because I think it is a gorgeous film. Uh, it filmed well, the CGI is wonderful, and some of those spell casting scenes, especially with Grindelwald, are absolutely stunning. Uh, so if that's your thing, that's your big uh, niche, maybe that's something to consider looking into this film for, because uh, just to sit down and watch, I think as both a Harry Potter fan, and even removing it from myself, uh, even if I wasn't a fan of the series, I, I think it would definitely be enjoyable. No complaints there whatsoever. But I think what really saves this film is our actors and our portrayals. Uh, mm, first and foremost, let me let you know right now, I am not a Johnny Depp fan. Never have been. I think he portrays the same character over and over and over again. Uh, it's the same Tim Burton, creepy Johnny Depp vibe. Uh, it, it's just not good. And Johnny Depp himself is just not good. Uh, he's a, a creep of a person and just not a fan of his work. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry, everybody who likes Johnny. Uh, however, as Grindelwald, I kind of dig it. I can get behind it. Uh, he plays it off quite well. Uh, I, I would assume we would have this eccentric, over-the-top Lord Voldemort-type character, uh, which would be a part of a children's bad guy, a children's villain. But Johnny Depp plays it well. Uh, we kind of get those uh, little fleeting glimpses into the over-the-top bad guy. I mean, look at him, honestly. He's, he's a bit over-the-top. But he's so reserved, and well-spoken, and charming, and thoughtful, it really makes us kind of enjoy the character. I can get behind it. Uh, there's one scene in particular, it's when he is addressing the wizarding audience uh, towards the end of the film. He really just has this charm, and this way of speaking that is absolutely necessary to make us believe that he is not only the villain, but a charismatic leader. And that's absolutely necessary, especially if we are drawing people into this for the first time. Maybe if they've never seen any of the Harry Potter films, they don't know the lore behind it. We have to believe that this man is not just there to be the super bad. Uh, he is there to convince these wizards of what he believes. And Johnny Depp is so successful throughout that that at some point I'm like, all right, I can kind of see where he's coming from. Not bad. Not bad, Johnny Depp. And opposite of him, we have Jude Law, portraying a young Albus Dumbledore. This would be our third Dumbledore that we've seen throughout the Harry Potter series. And I was very concerned going into that. Uh, Dumbledore is such an iconic character, and I think portrayed so well in the Harry Potter films. Uh, 
with either actor who portrayed him. Uh, absolutely, both gave it their all, uh, gave it life, and it was well done. So I didn't want to see a third Dumbledore. Didn't want it. Didn't think it could be pulled off well. Uh, but Jude Law gives us a ambitious, young, uh, sometimes maybe a little bit too... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he's still educated, still intelligent, still has the wit of Dumbledore, uh, but he still has the naivety of youth. And he still goes into things, uh, guns a-blazing almost. And that works. I, I think it's very believable for a young Dumbledore because we do see here one of the most powerful wizards of all time. The only man who throughout the film they refer to can take on Grindelwald. Yet he's reserved about it. He's calm about it and he's calculated about it. That's very Dumbledore, and it's very well done. Uh, so I think Jude Law is incredibly successful in that portrayal, and we even get that little uh, subtle hint of a love interest between him and Grindelwald, which I think was uh, both subtle and well done, uh, in good taste. And since that's become such a big, uh, big point of the Harry Potter series, I, I think it's well done. No complaints whatsoever on that end. Uh, we also get some other portrayals that we get, uh, obviously, Nagini. I know there was a lot of controversy throughout that about Nagini actually being a, a person at one point in time. Uh, we also get uh, our title character moving forward in his second film. Uh, still the same. Uh, Newt is still lovable. Uh, he's still entertaining. Uh, and a little whimsical from time to time might be the best word for it. Uh, so there's some definitely uh, there's some good scenes in this. It is a funny, enjoyable film. And... As compared to that first one, I, I would put this one just worlds above the first Fantastic Beast movie. I think, honestly, even as a standalone film, having no knowledge of the Harry Potter universe, no knowledge of the first Fantastic Beast film, I, I think, honestly, you could sit down, watch this, enjoy it, and come away with something. I, I am kind of excited about uh, the next film. But, there's always a but. The one thing that just doesn't work is the plot hole at the end. This huge reveal right at the end of the film where we find out that the young man with the superpower that we've been trying to harness this entire time, Grindelwald's trying to get a hold of him so he can control the world, everyone else is trying to get a hold of him to help him, you know, control his power. Turns out he's a Dumbledore. A long lost Dumbledore. That is so ridiculous and so over the top. I, my assumption is J.K. Rowling would have given her blessing to this film, uh, which I assume she did, because it, it's so ridiculous and unbelievable, only J.K. Rowling would say, oh yeah, it's a great idea, that works. Uh, we have here uh, a seven book series, eight movie series, at which no point in time in the greater canon of Harry Potter is this long lost Dumbledore ever mentioned. And suddenly, just so we can make the plot work, here he is. Uh, Obviously, it's going to cause some tension between Grindelwald and Dumbledore, uh, so I think there's some excitement to be seen as that plays out next film uh, with Jude Law and Johnny Depp. No worries about that whatsoever. Uh, but as far as the plot as a whole goes, man, that is just so ridiculous and in such poor taste. Uh, it's not believable. There's no suspension of disbelief. It's just like, well, here it is, because it makes the plot work. So, a little disappointed in that aspect. But all in all, that's really my main complaint with the film. I think up until that point, I was really enjoying it. And it was really building towards something. And there was a lot of anticipation coming up towards that ending. And when that reveal hit, I was completely deflated. I'm like, oh, you gotta be shitting me. It's really our ending. That's what we're gonna go with. All this anticipation. All this promotion for this. Not my cup of tea. Not for me. However... Overall, I would say the film is okay. I would definitely suggest you go see it. It is definitely worth your ticket price. And, I mean, it's Harry Potter, man. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, you gotta go see it. I, it's gonna keep that dream alive for you. It's gonna make you relive uh, the Harry Potter experience from when you were young. I, I think it's a, a necessity to go see that film if you're a fan of the series. So... My name is Dalton Gentry, and this is Frame Rate. And on Frame Rate, we do a lot of movie reviews. We do trailer reviews, and we talk about films in general. So if you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a like as well. And let me know in the comments what you uh, thought about oh, uh, Harry Potter movie here, Crimes of Grindelwald. And uh, let's get a little discussion going about that, because I feel like there's a lot of people who want to talk about that plot hole in the end. And it needs to be addressed. 
And if you would like to help me and my counterpart, who's not here right now, Adrian Fort, uh, create more content like this here on Framerate, there is a link, as always, to our Patreon to be found in the description below. was developing. So a little more reckless, still reserved. I like the betrayal. So I think that works as well. Yes? It's open. Be fucking kidding me. The one time you're not here, uh, pizza delivery man just showed up to deliver a fucking pizza and interrupted my video. I'm excited. I fucking do this again.